All right. So now I have the honor to be joined by Seema and Sadie, uh, two of my very good friends and colleagues in different ways. Uh, we work together in different uh, organizations, groups, projects, whatever you want to call it. So I'm super excited. Um, you all both were participants, attendees of the event along with me. Um, let's, uh, let's give our audience a little bit of background of who you are in case, in case they don't know you, in case they don't have the pleasure of knowing how epic you are. Um, Seema, will you just share, I think like, you know, your sort of current job mm -hmm. descriptions, you know, your relationship to, you know, these cultures, snowboarding, skateboarding, action sports. Sure. Um, and then we'll go from there. So go ahead. Awesome. Um, Seema, I use her pronouns. I'm from Washington. I'm from the Northwest. Um, and so I guess that's a big element into why I'm into snowboarding. I am Indonesian Persian, um, just half, half kind of perfectly down the line. Um, and I currently work at Scale Like a Girl. I've been with Scale Like a Girl for almost eight years now, which is kind of crazy. I am the um, skateboarding inclusivity cooperative. <laughs> I can't say big words because English is not my first language. <laughs> I say it a lot. Maybe that's just because my brain doesn't work. So maybe it's a cop out. <laughs> um, <laughs> Um, program manager. So that's really cool. So, um, just helping other people out and you're the sick, the program sick. manager. We named yeah. it sick S I C on purpose. So good. I love it. Um, and snowboarding, how did I get into snowboarding? So I grew up in this little town called Muggleteo, Washington. Um, and it is a fairy town. I don't know. There's not much. I don't really I don't think I remember much because I didn't want to remember much. And but I do remember going to Stevens Pass all the time. And my Persian dad, who never grew up around mountains, like just was wonderful and took me up there. And I remember my first lesson was so bad. <laughs> and my instructors were laughing at me. I like scorpion to ton, but there's something about it that like kept me going back. I don't know what it was. I can't even pinpoint it. And I think so many people can relate to that. So I kept snowboarding. Um, so I've been snowboarding since I was like 14, 15, and now I'm 25. Um, Did your then, dad snowboard with you or ski? No. <laughs> he just like, here you in a lesson. He was like, yeah. oh. He tried to ski. Dude, shout out to your dad. I know. I love him. He tried to ski. I love, he was like trying to ski, doing the like lessons. And then he's like, I don't like it. I'm like, it's okay. He's like, I just want to be in the lodge. I'm like, awesome. So, and my parents were kind of strict. So like, I they allowed me my parents would allow me like they would be my dad was like yeah you can go with your friend on the mountain anytime I'll take you but you can't go to the mall by yourself <laughs> so that was like just it's it's smart but I'm like what the heck like I can like maybe follow the tree well but I can't go to like hot topic <laughs> by myself so I think a lot of a lot of people can kind of relate to that too and having Asian parents um <laughs> But yeah, and I think that was also kind of like an act of rebellion in a weird way. I'm an only child and like I grew up with the really so my mom is Indonesian and most of her family's Indonesia. So I got really lucky growing up with a lot of Indonesian culture, but I didn't have like a direct like line to that. My parent, my dad, his Persian family, a lot of them live in um, Washington as well. So I was around like engineers and soccer players and like, you know, like worldly people. And I was just like kind of this punk kind of and I never did it to like I guess like consciously go against my parents but I mean it's that that sentiment of like I wanted to fit in yeah. um and we can we'll probably get more into this later but like I remember my parents telling me because my parents both when they met didn't speak the same language so they themselves were like learning how to speak English to each other so I'm I grew up a pretty confused child like I was very <laughs> confused um about my identity and like even my parents identity and like I remember my parents telling me, and this is really sad and like heartbreaking that I would, every time they would try to speak their native language to me, like individually, so that maybe I could learn it, I would close my ears. I would like cover my ears. And I'm like, no, I don't want to. I don't want to because everyone around me spoke English, looked different. Yeah. Um, you know, like, yeah, it was so like now I'm like, damn, I could be trilingual. Like I could be so <laughs> popping. But instead I closed my ears and I, I had to explain to them because it hurt them. They yeah. couldn't tell me that. And I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was five. I don't know what yeah. my brain was doing. Um, and yeah, so 
snow back to snowboarding yeah i learned i would work at some i worked at bc surf and sport i so it, it kind of like relating a little bit with um like what a lot of people go to snowboarding and skating for is that whatever it's i wouldn't say it's inclusive but no matter what like everyone snowboards or skates so that's something you can identify with yeah you know you can like kind of run away from your identity and be like well yeah yeah i'm i might be a mutt but i'm a snowboarder don't worry like we can relate but then the thing is you i'm not the same like i said this in on instagram like when or in my in my article in snowboard mac shout out mary walsh um even when i put on a snowboard kit it i wasn't the same as everyone else and that sucked um but yeah that was kind of my long intro no Um, i think that's great i mean (laughs) something that i think that what you're pointing to is like when you're actually riding a snowboard or a skateboard like you have to be so present because you can't be distracted it's like one of the things you can't do while multitasking i mean sometimes we use our phones but no in general you have to be super present on your board and i think in that moment because you're just focused mentally you are free you're free from the constraints Mm -hmm. of society you're free from the stories and narratives about who you are who you aren't and um yes like we're wearing clothes and all that stuff but like when you're just like kind of flying i think a lot of people like skate and snowboard and surf because of that experience of like literally like the closest thing to flying is what i've heard a lot of people say um you're not thinking about you know your hair color your skin Mm -hmm. color your the shape of your eye you're just like fuck it i'm 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 going you know um Mm -hmm. so it's interesting that that's kind of what you levitated towards as a as a kid and against all the odds of yeah like you lived in a small town and your parents were in the they, snow. <laughs> yeah they're like what is this but again shout out to the parents who are willing to give their kids that opportunity even if they can't understand it mm-hmm. i'm sure your dad understands that on some level he was like oh she's outside she's learning to fall and to get back up like but even if they didn't even get their own opportunity to enjoy these things um, I think that's why, you know, for all of us, like with immigrant parents, that's essentially why they work their asses off to come here. You know, yep. it's not like super exactly. fun to go live somewhere where no one can understand you and doesn't look like you at all. You're doing it to like make that, uh, those opportunities for your kids. And it sounds like that's what your dad did. Period. Did people <laughs> in the back hear that when you want to talk about immigration? Well, I just think about... <laughs> I think about like some of the, my grandpa just turned a hundred, like we celebrated his hundredth birthday. And I just think about like, he has this crazy life story. And I just think about like, dude, he like worked his ass off, ass off for like me to be able to snowboard. Like I'm so privileged and lucky, you know, cause like snowboarding is a privilege, you know, and even skateboarding is a privilege, you know, lower barrier to entry in terms of price, but it's still a privilege, you know, like we're able-bodied, we have you know, the, the rights in society to do that. In some places you cannot even step outside, you know, uh, depending on what you look like or your gender or whatever. So, um, so yeah, I love that. That's kind of like, you know, how you found it and, and then kept going, you know, real quick question for you before we jump to Sadie, do you, did you identify as Asian growing up? Like how, or you were just like, I don't know what I am. Like, I'm just a human um so a little background of muckle too is a lot of actually korean families and Mm -hmm. white people like white families as well but like middle class on both ends and obviously there's um other classes in there as well so there were asians around me but like the koreans kind of hung out with each other and then like the white people obviously and, and i'm a mutt i'm ambiguous and the bittersweet thing about it like the bitter thing is that i have i can't be like oh i can't be like oh my I'm my arms are hairy because I'm Persian and people are like what do you mean like I don't even know what a Persian person looks like and then you add Indonesian to it um so I could never I was not Indonesian enough for the Indonesians I wasn't Persian enough for the Persians and then my parents themselves were like learning how to you know be an American I don't know like I think I was I think also my parents like blessed them but they were like for a long time we're like well we immigrated like we're not typical Americans. And then, so in my head, I was like, oh, I'm not American, but I am American. Yeah. And then like, I grew up and my, my dad's like, well, you are American. You grew up here, like your entire, like your everything. And I was just like, I don't know. I, I'm going to yeah. be honest, like even at almost 26, I don't know where I fit in. Um, and it might be because of my environment that I'm in the Northwest where it's predominantly white, especially in Portland, but I don't know. I, I am an Asian American because I'm American culturally, 
I'm American, but also culturally, I'm Persian and also culturally, I'm Indonesian. So I don't know. I'm like a blob <laughs> of things. Um, but it's you're it's, a unicorn. I'm you're a, just, I you're guess just Sima. I am just Sima. You're Sima. I'm Sima. Um, but I do wish, I do wish, I think sometimes it's safe. It's a safe, it's a safety thing. It's a comfort thing to be able to be like, you know, like I'm Latina, blah, 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 right. And be able to like, hold on to that. Yeah. And, you don't um, have and that. I had nothing to hold on to. I was like, I don't know, like even with mm-hmm. beauty standards, I wasn't like, I can't be like, you know, like my Persian sisters, like I look like them and like, um, and then actually it's funny because my dad's like, you kind of look like Uz- Uzbekistan a little bit. Cause like they're the perfect, like, you know, Middle Eastern and Asian together. I'm like, but I'm not from Uzbekistan <laughs> and I wish I was, but like, I'm not. Um, so yeah, I am, I, I am an Asian American. And when I speak about my entire um, experience as a whole, yeah, I'm definitely, I identify proudly with being American. I identify proudly with being Asian, but I'm always tr- having to prove to people that I'm Asian. Like, you know, when the whole, and all this stuff on social media happened, I would see my friends be posting like, you know, stop Asian hate, but like they wouldn't check in on me. And I'm like, do you not realize that I just got off the phone with my mom who still has her accent is very Asian, like crying, buying her pepper spray. And I was angry, you know, I was angry at my friends. Um, It's not their fault because I was, and it's not, it's not anyone's fault. None of this like human relationships and the human humanity in general is not like simple. So I'm not angry at anyone like in the long run, but I was in like for a week. I was you wanted so to be seen and I heard. wanted to be seen. Yeah. I was yeah. like, you, y'all like why you're my best friends and you don't, you're, do I have to be like, hello, I'm Asian. <laughs> like 1-800, I am Asian. <laughs> Just get it tattooed on you. <laughs> yeah. Say that again. Tattoo. On you. I had, yeah, I should, you know, like just like right here. Yeah. A reminder, but yeah, no, thank you for sharing that. I think it's Mm -hmm. so important to hear the experiences of all of us are different, even if we were the same race, but especially being mixed, right. Different ethnicities. And then also like, I think for your parents, like that is that in itself, you're talking about how you're a rebel and like punk rock, but that in itself, your parents like meeting and marrying each other is a huge, like act of rebellion in terms of like tradition right so i think that's where you get it from but um don't say that out loud <laughs> you want to give them give them that credit they don't want to be rebels they don't want to be rebels uh, no they want to conform but it's i think okay. anyone who immigrates to somewhere else is rebellious because that takes a lot you know mm-hmm. like but all right sadie how about you tell us about your background you where you grew up yeah. and um, also your relationship to snowboarding yeah uh, it's kind of funny, I, uh, hearing Kim's story earlier and then, well, also knowing your story and then hearing Sima's, like, I identify with, like, little parts of both of your stories, but, um, yeah, I grew up in the Bay Area, but I grew up in a very different part of the Bay Area than mm-hmm. Kim, uh, very predominantly white, very middle class, um, and I actually didn't even find snowboarding until I was in college, like, that was not even on my radar. It wasn't an option that I ever knew was possible. My parents are not outdoorsy. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm third generation. Uh, I'm My dad is Japanese and my mom is Chinese. So I am, I'm kind of a mutt also, but it's a different experience because I am ob- like, no one ever mistakens me for anything other than Asian, but there's still that like internal struggle of like, I don't feel Japanese enough. I don't feel Chinese yeah. enough. I don't feel Asian. Like it's just never, never a feeling of being enough. But um, I like randomly joined the ski snowboard club at my school and uh, I didn't even know how to snowboard. And they were just like, well, do you want to learn? And I was like, heck yeah, I do. And they just brought me in. And I think it's the first time I've in my life I had ever felt like I belonged somewhere. And Ever, Wait, can like, you tell the story of like how you actually met the girl? Oh gosh. <laughs> yes. Yes. I love it. Because um, you just never know who's out yeah, there that can relate. Oh gosh. Um, I was razor scootering <laughs> through the yes. <laughs> yes. spot at my school and this girl stopped me and she was like, oh, you scooter. Like, do you skate? I was like, no. She went down the list like, do you surf? Do you snowboard? Do you ski? And I was like, no, I don't do any of these. And she was like, do you want to? And I was like, sure like I would love to and I was like this girl doesn't really care and she gave me a flyer and um I just like kept it in my bag and uh the first event that I went to 
was an, was a ladies night. And so, and I remember they were going all around the circle, like, Oh, like say like, do you ski, do you snowboard? And I was just like, I don't do anything. You're but- like, I raise your scooter. <laughs> Would it put her on the spot, Kim? <laughs> Dude, I'll, I razor scootered at one point. I remember uh, when they came out, I was interning in the city and I was like, how am I about to get from BART to this office? Like, I'm not going to skate. It was like up and downhill gnarly. And like, I was just like, fuck it, razor scooter. But I only say that because like, no hate. Like if someone scooters right now, right? And that's just like the closest thing they got to like a board with four wheels, like great. Maybe they're the next Sadie that's going to yes. become a freaking snowboarder and that's progress. Cool. You know? So yeah. anyways, that's why I'm not trying to like embarrass you. I'm just saying, dude, I rollerbladed as a kid. Like I got some rollerblades during COVID. I was like, let me just, whatever makes you happy. And yeah. if you're like moving and moving your body, like no judgment, you know? So anyways, back to your uh, college experience. <laughs> And then you became the president of the club, right? I I did. Yeah. yeah. See, you just never know. You never know. My senior year, I was like, it came full circle. And then I was able to, you know, then I was like, I was looking out for scooter kids. I was like, (laughs) see, that's what I'm saying. (laughs) You could be me. It's not your religious experience. All you had. The thing is, here's the thing about scootering too. It's like, it is marketed as way more accessible. It's for anyone and everyone, you know, Yeah. like. So yeah, we hate on it. Cause like, obviously sometimes it's annoying to have a bunch of scooters at the skate park. It's actually kind of dangerous, you know, but that is the access point for a lot of kids and a lot of people. And so, and I do think that like board sports are a lot more exclusive where you have to like mm-hmm. be cool. You gotta be a certain way, like whatever, like style. you got it, you know? Yeah. So it's like, sometimes that's just the entry point. And I think that board sports can be, can take a note from, you know, other activities that are literally like for everyone, like bikes for everyone, you know? So um anyways but yeah so then you uh were in college and then that's how we met right Mm -hmm. yeah I actually like within the first three months of me learning how to snowboard I got my first internship at a goggle company like a snowboard goggle company and then from there I just was like okay I never don't want to be surrounded by people in the outdoor Mm -hmm. industry like this is just this it was like my safe place and so and then that first year, someone had told me about Mafia. And uh, I was back in the Bay at home. I like took a semester off and Kim was working at a work and snow, work and skateboarding panel in Berkeley. And I went by myself um, and I came up to her at the end of the panel and I was just like, hey, do you need an intern? <laughs> it was like, what? Like totally just pretty off. Yeah. I love it. Um, yeah. And then I got to start working for Kim. I actually got to interview Nirvana. Um, and then just from there, I was just like, okay, this is, this is what I want to do. Yeah. So cool. And I didn't know like your relationship to, I was like, I think when you were like, Hey, you know, I'd love to intern. I wasn't like, okay, send me your like sponsor me tape. Let me judge you. <laughs> I, to me, I wasn't coming from that place. I was like, I need someone who like is super good on a computer. Like, can answer emails, can come to the office on time. Like, so for me, I think also just understanding like everyone's skills are different. And just because you had just started snowboarding, I was, it, that didn't matter to me. I was like, clearly you're passionate about, you know, being in this industry, like to go as far as to like come to an event by yourself and like introduce yourself. That takes a lot of courage. And so I, I recognize that. Cause like, I see that happening, you know, in different events and some of the coolest people I've met, that's how it happened. You know, just like a reach out, like, Hey, you know, my name is da da da. da. Like, this is what I I'm good at. This is like how I'd like to contribute. And that ends up being sometimes like just the starting point, you know? So, um, and then we went to, um, Christine and well, at the time it was Christine and fancy were like running, hosting a, a women's snowboard camp in Japan. And then you like made it happen to come and, it was so cool. Cause I, I think what I saw in you was like, okay, you're just like us. You just didn't have access until later. You know what I'm saying? Cause like you just would go for, it. I think the first time I went snowboarding with you, I'm like, damn, this girl is just like no risk assessment. Cause I'm a very like cautious, like, I'm like, Oh, I don't know. Cause I'm like older. And also like growing up playing team sports injury was always like such a thing. Like don't get injured, you know? Yeah. You would just went for it. I'm like, damn, she is just gnarly. Like just getting, you know, tossed and like tacoing on these rails i'm like all right like shout out to sadie um no, no, she's not maybe sadie she's just 
I don't know why that came up in my head and I wanted to finish that out, but I'm not Kristen. <laughs> yeah. You don't have the one liners like Kristen. Mm-mm. Yeah. I got like a half practice. liner to practice, but, uh, also you've progressed super fast. And then I, uh, can you share a little bit about just your experience working in the industry? Because what is that like to be, to discover something a little bit later in life as an adult? know that you're still a beginner and then pursue a career in it. Like that's all, like most people are like, Oh, I'm not going to put myself in that position. You know, cause usually it's the other way around. Like you're like a former pro athlete and then you like work in the industry, you know, yeah. can you talk about that? Um, yeah, I think I've struggled a lot with like still feeling like whether I belong or whether I have enough like experience or um, street cred street cred to be in it. I remember like when I came to interview, I, uh, at mafia, I spent like two hours trying to decide what I was going to wear because I was like, I have to look like I snowboard. And I was like, I don't know what that looks like. <laughs> you show up in like a helmet and goggles <laughs> in the, in like the middle of summer in Berkeley. That would have been amazing. <laughs> the bars, I would have ridden the bar like that. Yeah. It would have been great. Um, yeah, but I think I, I honestly like feel super, super fortunate to have met you, Kim, because I think you gave me a lot of early confidence to know that I didn't need to be a certain person, a certain thing to be able to fit into the industry and watching you kind of carve out your space. And then also watching you just be a champion for so many others, carve out their space. I was kind of like, okay, like I want to do that. And you at the time were like pretty broad, but you also like had carved your space out in, in skate. And I was like, okay, like I'm really passionate about swimming. Like, can I create something like that? Or can I, you know, start down that path for myself? And I think it's, it's still a daily struggle to um, like, even for the event, I was like, I am not that good at snowboarding. Like, I'm probably just not going to hit anything. Like, should I go? Like, am mm-hmm. I taking from someone else who like Mm -hmm. you know do something cooler I don't know there's just like but I think um it was really cool that at every job I've had I've been fortunate to have like a lot of mini internships is every single person I've talked to has been like I don't care if you're the best at snowboarding I care if you can show up if you can you know if you're passionate about it and so that's made like a huge difference for me and then I think like a couple of years ago, I actually discovered that, you know, being, having a lot of people learn when they're younger. And so learning when you're older, I remember what it's like to be a beginner. And I, Mm. I feel like that's a unique experience that I have. And, um, I connect with different people in industry, um, having that in common and, you know, being able to talk to people about that. So, um, I've been slowly starting to realize that, you know, some of these differences that I thought were like going to be huge barriers or reasons why people didn't accept me are actually ways that make me maybe a little bit more unique or special, but yeah, I mean, if we talk about like mar- a marketing role, right. Like the whole point is try to, to try to get more folks into the, into part- participating to also be customers. Cause obviously this is like a business driven thing. Um, so I like how you said that you being a beginner actually made you, it makes you more of an asset because you understand what is it like to be on the outside of this culture and then enter like, and then same with skate, like girl, we always say the best instructors are like <laughs> beginner skateboarders. Cause they aren't like pro skateboarders. Like I love all of them. They're amazing, but they can't relate to what it's like to be a beginner. A they're like super good, the best in the world. And then B like, they've been doing it for so long that it's hard for them to like, put their brain back in that place. They're just like, I don't know, just do it. You know? And it's Mm -hmm. like, when you just learned, it's actually easier to teach someone. Cause you're like, oh yeah, last month is where I was at where you are now, you know, in terms of even just like first step. So I think that's also something the industry struggles with, like having been in that, been in the action sports industry, like it was such a, just like a homie, like friends, like, let's just keep it. Like, I get it. Like, I want to work with only my friends too, you know, cause it's more fun and it's more casual. It's like less stressful. Um, but that was the issue for so long of why there wasn't diversity and why um, a lot of, uh, I would say, like sales plateaus in terms of participation um, is because everyone's just in the same kind of like echo chamber, you know? Well, I feel like that's why a lot of people get jaded with the industry. I know I definitely, 
um just I guess kind of transitioning to just speaking about a little bit about the event that we were at like yes I'm gonna be honest like I was already getting so because I'm getting ready to move to New York and I was like I'm gonna miss an entire season I don't even care I'm jaded by the industry I'm jaded by the not the community but just like sometimes what snowboarding can be so exclusive and like talking a little bit out of race just in general um and yeah when I got the invite I was like what I haven't snowboarded for like three months. I'm going to go to this thing where it's only Asians that I don't have to explain how I feel to someone. Like they can, they'll just know or like they might not know, but they won't, they won't like, they won't even say I'm sorry. Like I love, like, which is not a bad response when you're someone who doesn't know, like haven't had that experience because, you know, you talk to people who are not POCs and they're like, I'm really sorry you went through that. And I'm like, you know, you only hear I'm sorry or like I'm sorry the that you have to go through that or like whatever and then of course like the combative combative response is like well what are you doing about it you know but I don't want to do that but it was so nice to be able to snowboard with people who they're like yeah me too and I'm like oh my yeah. god that's so cool but like yeah like speaking to you know off of what you're talking about Kim is just like it's easy to get jaded but it's also easy to get inspired and I think yeah. that's exactly what this those like that event was yeah was that inspired but it was like authentic inspiration it wasn't like a oh I watched a video and I was inspired for two seconds it was like I'm literally cried at least three times since yeah, that time in sure. just pure happiness and just being like no matter what I could I can snowboarding to me now is so much different it's such a different mm-hmm. thing to me now now it's yeah. it's more it's really who I am Like, I don't have to prove anything to anyone because I have a group of people that I can be like, no matter where I am in life and I want to snowboard again, even if I have to fly to Colorado, like I'm down, like I'm down or to fly down to California to snowboard with. So, you know, that's really special. Yeah. What, uh, what were some of your guys' takeaways? Like, um, just from the experience, maybe even unexpected. Cause I think we all had some expectation, like, Oh, it's going to be rad. It's going to be amazing. Um, but like what were some unexpected takeaways? Um, I think I've always struggled really hard with being proud to be Asian. Um, I think just like the product of the environment that I grew up in. And I think like AK just being like Asian is, I don't know, the way he speaks about it is he's so confident, he's so proud. And he was just like, Asian is not what we do, it's who we are. I don't know why, but I've thought about that like every single day. And I think there was a lot of moments where I was just like thinking about all of the feelings I've internalized over the years. And I I think too, like reading a lot of people's experiences on Instagram after and like, I don't know, like Kim, the other Kim wrote about how she felt like when she got the invite that she wasn't even good enough to go either. And she rips. Oh, <laughs> yeah, she rips. I know. Oh I felt the same way. <laughs> so to read that, I was like, oh my gosh, like I'm not alone. And I think like the whole, the whole couple of days was just over and over again, feeling like I'm not alone. And yeah. it was really surreal. And like, I don't think I've fully processed. Like I haven't, it's been really hard. It's just a hard thing. We're here to process together. I think what was cool about the event too, and I think speaking to what your your concerns were, with Sadie, on the whole um, like ability level thing. Like, yo, I myself, like, I <laughs> I tried the same trick the entire time. I was just happy to be there. But I think, and I think what the kind of the importance of that event was allowing to put our identity of being Asian first for the first time Mm -hmm. and not hiding behind the snowboarding like the snowboarding is what with the vehicle that brought us together um because like you know we grow up with these those stereotypes of you know Asians only playing piano like you know what you came to what you were saying but we're like we don't have to worry about like what brought us together in the terms of like what we like we all like snowboarding we love that But I think like we never were able to just be like, I'm a like I am Asian and we get to be together. And so I think that's why none of us walked away being like, damn it, I didn't get that trick. Like I didn't. I was like, "Ah, now I have a wound on my arm. I don't care. This is great. Like, you know, I could I could I don't know. Yeah, that was so 
powerful. Like, and like, you know, we use these big words like powerful, da 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 da. And um, to try to grab onto those feelings and maybe they, they seem maybe over positive, like too positive maybe. Um, but those are just two. I was only there for one day. I know y'all were there for two days. Imagine all of us have been snowboarding maybe for over five years or like whatever, like, you know, everyone's been snowboarding either like the range of time that everyone's been snowboarding has been different, but I know a lot of us have been snowboarding for a minute and those two days yeah, of being true. able to see ourselves in other people oh my god like game life changer, changer. Yeah, yeah game changer for sure <laughs> jinx <laughs> personal jinx yeah yeah i think it's so interesting to think about how yeah until you like experience it you don't even know you know what's possible i think for me too like um the the mental part does translate to the physical part right so like i think growing it looking back growing up like entering this like very white culture that I wanted to be a part of like I wanted literally like when I was a kid I was like I wish I was white you know like mm, me and my mm-hmm. friend me and my me and my one friend from high school um she's also like a hundred percent Chinese her parents are from Taiwan we like went to Chinese school together and we like hated it because we were like forced mm. to go on the weekends but now I'm really grateful because I'm fluent in Mandarin um we even in high school had a little like nickname uh or just like a little I think we like made stickers at one point, but we were like Twinkie pride. And like in high school, Twinkie was like, that's how you identified if you were like yellow on the outside, but white on the inside. So we were like trying to be like proud. Like we would like tell our friends like, oh yeah, like I'm actually white on the inside. And our, our white friends would be like, yeah, you're like so white. And I'm like, thanks. You know, like it's like so fucked up to think about now, but, um, I think not ever like being able to just be you like confidently does translate to your board because we know skateboarding and snowboarding are so mental. And like, I get it now when a lot of pros are like, you know, struggle at contests or whatever they're filming apart. And like, they just had like a fight with a friend or whoever, like it makes sense. Like if you're not mentally whole, like you're going to have, that's going to be a barrier to performing at your highest level on your board, you know? Mm-hmm. And so at that event, I like actually felt more confident. I had literally snowboarded two days this season, Mm. you know, and like, I actually stopped, I like snowboard less and less every year. Um, I think a lot of factors, like it's so crowded in Tahoe and the Bay area. And it's like just a shit show, like weekend where I work, you know, skate like girl, we're like full-time nine to five Mm -hmm. Monday through Friday. So it's harder to get up when I was younger. It was like, Oh, let's go on a Tuesday. Cool. Like everyone's like, whatever. Yeah. The drive is gnarly. I used to drive, but I was in college. I, at UCSD, I was on the snowboard team and we'd drive from San Diego to mammoth every weekend. It was seven hours there and back, but we were also in college. So we had like way more free time. Mm -hmm. Um, but I, so I, I've been snowboarding less and less like that one year I went, the second year I went back to Japan with BT bounds with Christine and Mary and summer. Um, that was the only snowboarding I did that winter. Like, uh, so I, it's like, kind of was like weaning off. And I think there's a lot of excuses, a lot of reasons, but by now what I'm seeing too is like, yeah, it's like, wasn't as like, I don't know, like that, those logistical factors, plus not really fully being able to like see myself or be myself like impacted my joy for it. And then mm-hmm. what's interesting too, is like, so an event like this, obviously it's a game changer also going with the skate, like a girl crew. We do like one trip a year to Woodward Tahoe and our crew is like super diverse. Like a lot of people that was like their first time seeing snow. That was more fun snowboarding with them than, you know, it was like in any other context. So I think just the whole, like getting to be yourself part is so important. And that does translate to progression on your board. Like I would not have hit that hip. Like if it was just a normal day, oh I have God. no regrets. I'm like, that was lightweight, so sick. lightweight, like stoked on my mini concussion, but also I was trying like, to get a doubles with you. And then I just saw you on the ground. I was like, then, just kidding. Yeah, I was just like flying out of the air, but like Nirvana and summer, like encouraging me and just like feeling like, okay, if I'm ever going to push myself, like this is the place to do it because I was feeling so like whole mentally. Also, I just come back from due tour a month, uh, two months ago, commentating. And for the first time ever, like seeing like girl skaters from, you know, Indonesia, like Philippines, mm-hmm. Japan, like China, I, like never met a, a skateboarder from China. And so that made me feel more accepting of myself. And then when I got back, I was like, let's skate. And normally I'm like, hey, I'm good. Like I'm old, like I'm not trying to get injured. 
uh, we're out, we're around skateboarding all the time. Like I got kind of jaded too with skateboarding. So like, it's really interesting how, when you feel yourself, you see yourself, um, and you're stoked on yourself that does translate to your board, you know? So, and then I think also too, like nowadays with, I hope for the next generation, they have that, they don't have to go through those. Like, do I belong? Like I need to prove myself, you know? Um, so, but it was cool seeing some of the younger girls at this event. Um, like, I'm like, wow, what, what is it like for their like 11 year old brains? You know, like, it must be pretty cool. I don't know, but yeah. Um, all right. Well, let's see. What else do we want to talk about? Um, I guess Seema, like what I think what's interesting is to like kind of compare and contrast like skateboarding and snowboarding a little bit because they are different. They are very different in terms of access, but it's interesting. Me and you both came, I snowboarded first before I skateboarded. Same, same. And you as well. And I think there's a reason for that because access, like, yes, it's expensive, but you literally can sign your kid up for lesson. That's like what your dad did. That's what my parents did. They like put me in a ski school. It was and more skateboarding like, hasn't had that up until now, like with skating right, girl, you know? Right. Um, but I was going to ask you, like, what do you think snowboarding can learn from skateboarding in terms of the community and the industry? Cause like, there's a lot more diversity and now inclusion, there's still lots of work to be done. And like, there's gaps for sure. But like, I think that from my experience, like, I don't want to get into like the, I, obviously there's a larger entry a uh, barrier of entry in snowboarding and that's like a whole store like conversation on its own um just because of the kind of communities and neighborhoods that you're able to reach when you're just skating versus yeah. snowboarding you can like literally just go outside your house if there's pavement. yeah i'm gonna be i think the the thing that just comes to my head for some reason is like you can be more exclusive in snowboarding because it's only a few times of the year and like the people who are really into it will like only party in mountain towns. And like, I wanted to like, I think the difference is like, I think it's really that entry to barrier, like that barrier to entry, like, um, and what snowboarding can learn from skating. And it is in a sense behind culturally. Um, I think it's just to have more conversations with your friends. Like, I think that like, what I think maybe there's more downtime in skateboarding where you're there's more hanging out and it's all year long and also a lot of skaters hang out with like different crowds all the time and like are a little more multi-dimensional in what they do where like people who snowboard and not to generalize but from my experience was like I only sometimes I only saw people three months out of the year and they never really took the time to get to know me outside of that mm. um and so because skateboarding so more easily accessible you can like let's skate and go get food. Yeah. You know, where like some people are like, I gotta, I, I can get, take a couple laps with you. I gotta go home. Um, and then the people who are really in the snowboard scene and in the industry, like, you know, you kind of stick to your own, <laughs> which kind of is cool. But I think just having conversations, like, I know that sounds cheesy, but like you, you have the most impact within your smaller communities. And I will always stand by that because that's how I feel like I've impacted people. Um, Instagram's cool, but just having those conversations with my friends. Um, I don't know. There's industry wise, I don't have much to say because it is so different. Like market is so mm-hmm. different. The margins of just money is different too. Like yeah. your market is a lot shorter during the snow season. Yeah. So the way that snowboarding and ski industries will go about their marketing is going to be different than skateboarding because, you know, just the way that snow works. Um, but I think just having conversations and also, I don't know, like, yeah, I would, I think just representation, I think a, a big thing too. And I think that that's what this event exactly was. And the media that's coming out of this event yeah. is not like one Asian person at an event. It was like all Asian people and there's like an endless amount of media. And I'm so grateful. And like the fact that all these people are feeling comfortable to, you know, like, and this is an ode to AK and Nirvana, like, the fact that people are comfortable now to, like, I've always been an oversharer, so, like, me on Instagram and on the article is not new to people that know me, but there are some people, like, Kim Lee, you know, and, like, even Sadie coming on here and talking about your experience and your feelings and so many other people, that's probably their first time feeling like I have a safe place. I don't have to prove anything anymore. I have my homies in the back that are going to hold me up if, you know, someone wants to comment some stupid shit. Um, 
that so group I, vibe for sure. Cause like, if you just oh like made a post like that out of nowhere without an event, like, I think it, people would be like, what? Like, but it'd the be fact like, Seema, you're would... going to, you're talking, if it was for me, it'd They're be like, like oh, oh, again. <laughs> oh my God, again. <laughs> yeah. Um, but the whole point is like to bring people together to talk about our experiences and then to like put them out there if we feel confident to do so, you know? Um, yeah, I think something that snowboarding can learn from skateboarding in terms of, yes, there's like different logistical aspects. Like it's very expensive to like run a ski resort and that's why there's like these barriers to entry. And then there's the whole business side of things. But I think that, um, what you said about just asking questions is super important. Cause like, I do think mountain town, like snowboarding exists inside of mountain towns. Right. And skateboarding exists anywhere there's concrete. So obviously mm-hmm. there's already a cultural difference, but I thought one of the, my favorite moments was like when we were tailgating afterwards and just hanging out in the parking lot, some of the girls were asking me like about pronouns. Right. And like, I only have an understanding of that because of the work we do at skate like a girl and mm-hmm. we're in the Bay area. We're in like progressive cities. I only learned because of my role, attending trainings, like having a bunch of friends that are non-binary or trans because Mm -hmm. of our instructors, our volunteers, like people Mm -hmm. that gravitate towards our community. Um, And I get that in mountain towns, like it's a lot more homogenous. So there's probably not, if you live in like, you know, I don't know, like Salt Lake City or Truckee or something, you probably don't have a lot of opportunities to like meet folks that are trans or non-binary or whatever. But it was cool because some of the girls were just asking, they were just like, hey, like, can you like teach me or tell me more? And I was like, yeah, well, I'm not an expert, but this is like how we use pronouns as you like a girl, you know? Um, so I think just like being open to asking those questions. Right. And then I also think with, uh, with snowboarding, um, uh, like similar to skateboarding, just definitely letting go of this need to be good. Like Mm -hmm. I understand for competitions and sponsors. Yes. But like if the industry truly does want to sustain and thrive and continue to grow the market. You know, we're talking from a business standpoint, like you got to have more participants, you got to have more customers, like it's plateaued. Right. So in order to do that, you got to encourage like, Hey, it's okay to go once a year, because even if you only make it to, if you do one trip to a year with your friends to Tahoe or Whistler or whatever, from the end, from the core of the industry, that's like, Oh, those are like the kooks, the weekend, whatever warriors, the like, kooky kids, you know, whatever. But those people are the ones that could potentially also buy your products year round, especially if you make soft goods. Right. So I think that's an important piece to remember. Cause if you look at skateboarding, like people who are vans and thrasher, like, I don't know what the percentage is, but a large percent do not actually skate, but they identify with the culture. So I think it's possible for people to identify with like snow and outdoor sports culture, even if they only do it once a year, it's like, look at North face, like, you know, like my mom has a North face jacket and like, she's not mountaineering, like climbing Everest anytime soon. So I think that that's a piece that like some of our more core, smaller snowboard brands can try to like step into, I get it. Cause it's hard. You want to like maintain your, 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 your club. You're like, you also feel different. You're probably like in some ways marginalized from, from, from society because you're just like a ski bum, a snowboard, like couch surfing kid. But I do think that if we can open it up a little bit, that's what will benefit the business side of it. Well, also why limit yourself? You know, like you can be a a hardcore snowboarder and still be a million things I think that's maybe coming into age and like also exploring other aspects of my own personality identity in life like the best way to be is I, I in my opinion multi-dimensional and like I think people just fall back to just being a snowboard bum because it's easy but like you you know you being a snowboard bum and only buying capita you're as an example you know you have a say in the industry as well like you have a say as a person in general um so yeah I definitely agree with like the like kind of letting go of the gatekeeping too because like why like what like it's almost harder to be like it's harder to like build a fence you know um I think it comes from a place of like when if you were marginalized you feel the need to like hold on to what you do have so I get it right but at the same time, like trying to protect and gatekeep, like calling people kooks because of what they wear, what, how they ride or whatever is literally 
the barrier to growth. And that's why skateboarding has seen such an explosion in participation in the market is because literally there's like that whole like gatekeeping concept is out the door, you know, like if you wanted to, like, if you were a new participant, like your avenue into skateboard culture could literally be only following like later skaters on Instagram, which is literally like people like 40 plus skateboarding with like fully padded at a skate park, you know? And like, you could see that and be like, oh yeah, I'm a skateboarder. Right. So do you think that's kind of like what's missing a little bit, but again, like, I don't know, I think it's just interesting to explore. Um, I don't know, Sadie, what do you think? Like having some, being someone who like didn't grow up, you know, wasn't a pro snowboarder and then worked in the industry, you know, for brands like Nikita and whatever, like, what do you think could happen in order for these brands and the industry as a whole to like grow and like just evolve? Mm. Um, good question. A tough question. Million dollar answer. Uh, I think like, I think it's funny. Like I started snowboarding first and then I started skating afterward. And I actually have found that I've been fortunate to find some like really great communities in snowboarding, but in skateboarding also, like I've found much more random people that are willing to help me or just like at skate parks that are like, like, another girl would just come up to me like, Hey, you're a girl. I'm a girl. Like, let's, let's skate together. Like here, I'll, I'll show you how to like drop into the bowl. And I'm like, Oh, okay. Like super rad. And I feel like snowboarding doesn't have quite that same mentality. And I also yeah. think there's a lot more brands and organizations in skateboarding that are doing the work. Um, I think snowboarding is starting to do more of that, especially like in the last year, but mm. I think slower to do it um and I think for a lot of brands it's more based off you know public outrage than it is doing what is right because yeah 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 Yeah, Uh, unfortunately yeah but I think I don't know I see like BT Bounds like an all-women's snowboard camp like I've been around those girls and I've like the feeling that I get with those girls is similar to like being at soy sauce not like obviously different but I think, I think there's just less of a sense of com- like larger community snowboarding mm-hmm. than there is in skateboarding. Yeah. Um, but I think just investing back into the community, investing in organizations that are doing the work yeah. is serve. Sort of Encouraging sport. individuals to like create social projects, you know, cause like Soy Sauce Nation is essentially kind of like it's a, mm-hmm. a community from Instagram it, in, a, in a lot of ways you can consider it like a social project and skateboarding. There's tons of social, pro- like social projects, like cause related organizations and like maybe snowboard, uh, the snowboarding brands can like start to back that or encourage that. And obviously soy sauce nation is a great example of that. BT bounds also as well in terms of like women's progression and education, um, and just access. Like I love BT Bounds. Like, let's give a shout out to BT Bounds because, like, I think what they are doing is they're sharing that, like, all the epic aspects of being like a pro snowboarder. It's not an easy job by any mm-hmm. means, but like, you get to travel with your friends and like explore cultures around the world, like ride new places, get sort of like uh, insider like guides. Um, they're offering that in a way that the average person who works a nine to five can like experience, you know, which I think is really cool. Um, and it's like, they're doing it in a way that's like non-judgmental and very inviting. So like mm-hmm. when I went to Japan, um, you know, I, I was friends with Christina and Mary already, but like just watching them run the camp, I'm like, yeah, this is like, so cool. Like this, these women get to like, basically have a trip the same as a pro snowboarder would, mm. right. There's like a guy, there's a mountain guy. There's like someone taking you to the restaurant, someone shooting your photos, like regardless of how good you are, aren't like you got clips, like high res, like Insta gold. That's so cool. And like sharing that aspect of the culture with someone, regardless of their ability, like is huge because that's literally like, those are some of the most fun pieces of the culture, Mm -hmm. right? Like having community, like staying in a house together. That's like a huge part of it. You know, it's like road trips, like all that stuff. Um, so yeah, shout out to them, BT bounds. Uh, but um, yeah, I guess to, to wrap up, um, do you all have, um, I don't know, like 
what are your hopes and wishes for other folks that maybe have similar experiences as us? Like maybe if we want to say like other Asian kids or just people who maybe like participate in this culture or want to participate in this culture or these activities and haven't yet, um, you know, any thoughts or insight around how to continue pursuing it or even taking that first step, you know? I don't think like personally, I don't have like a stark piece of advice because I think I'm still really willingly exploring my identity as a snowboarder. And like, I think that, I think that not having absolutes is actually really great. Just like how AK is bringing up, like we have soy sauce, but we want to learn, keep learning. Um, I think that there's always gonna be trials and tribulations to identity. And it is for anyone um especially when you're in the states and you have so much media in your face and like you know (laughs) your environment again you might be like like kim lee grew up in montana i didn't know that you know and like uh, yeah i don't know i don't have a stark piece of advice because i'm still learning but i think just like be yourself as much as you can and if some days you can't that's okay um Mm. you know because that's what i've you know, and also being angry is okay sometimes too. Like, I think that like for so long and like I've had a friend, well, my friend Terrence, <laughs> who is, has gone, who's taken a lot of time to get to know me personally and on a professional level as well. When I was, when I was telling him an anecdote. So an anecdote that I've been bringing up a lot is that my friend Nolly <laughs> was getting mistaken for me on the hill. And like, I've definitely been mistaken for people in skating too, which She's pretty. So I'm like, I'm pretty too. Okay. That's fine. Um, but I was just like, damn, it's like, cause we're both Brown. Like there's so many different Brown people. So I'm telling this story to Terrence and I'm like, but we just like laughed about it. It's okay. And he's like, are you laughing about it? Cause it's a defense mechanism. I'm like, yeah, because I cannot be angry all the time. Um, but I think even in our culture, you know, and especially the immigrant culture is like, be thankful that you're here, yeah. put your head down. Um, and I definitely have been an angry, like I've gotten messages from people or I've, I, I remember last summer I got a message from, I think just by nature, I'm a very intense character in general. So but whether I'm Persian, blue, whatever, whatever I may be, I just, by character, I'm a pretty like outgoing person, but I, I definitely had um, a really good friend of mine who's um, Asian as well in the skate scene. And he's a male, like open up to me and be like, Hey, like it sucks to hear other people talk down on you because you're passionate. And I hear a lot from like, oh, not only white men, but white women as well. And I'm like, these are people who are like talking down on me of being passionate about coming to my events. Like I'm so confused. And then, so there's so many times where I'm like, I'm sorry, I'm not trying to be angry. You know, I don't want to be that angry brown girl. Yeah. Um, you know, I don't want to be crazy. And that has to do with like, not only my identity as um an Asian person also as a female or someone who identifies as femme, but yeah, just, just be yourself and like, give it a go. And some days you might, you might, you, what yourself looks like may look different every day too. So I love that. Yeah, that's, that's my biggest piece of advice. It's like, and you're never going to stop, um, uh, you know, um, discovering your identity because again, my dad, uh, li- uh, immigrated from Iran when he was 17 and here, and so he's lived in, Amer- the Amer- in America longer than he has in Iran just by circumstance. And he even himself is like, you know, I've been able to help him kind of talk more about stuff. And even my mom as well. And like, you know, and they're in like, they're, my dad's like 60 and my mom's in her fifties and, you know, they're still discovering yeah. their identity in it. But I think that's fun. Like make it fun, make it like a fun thing. Like this weekend to me was like, That was so fun fun. to like have to like deal with these emotions, but then like there's such a great outcome of it. So I think not to be like spiritual and hoopty doopy on that end, but like you're never gonna really like find your identity like as an absolute, but like how beautiful is that? Like you're always gonna discover something new about yourself and your community. And I think that's so dope. So that's my long winded advice. I know I do appreciate you basically saying like, you got to just be yourself. And that includes all the emotions. Like don't suppress if you're angry. Yeah. Like be angry, like Mm -hmm. find a healthy way to deal with it probably. But Mm -hmm. if you're happy, be happy. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know. I think it's like, 
I think where we start to like try to put ourselves in boxes or tell ourselves we should be this way or not should not be this way. That's where it starts to get like, you know, it's not going to end well. Cause you're just like suppressing what you're really feeling. And that's like how you get cancer, <laughs> you know, like, yeah. do you know what I'm saying? You know, like, cause I get it from our parents' perspective, like, Oh, just be grateful, like work hard. But I'm also like, I don't know if you're angry, like, let's be angry. Let's like say something about it. Let's protest, like whatever it is. But also if we're happy, let's just be freaking happy. You know, like, um, it was interesting, like processing all the, uh, Asian hate, the violence, like in the media on Instagram, especially because I don't like watch like, you know, cable news or anything. Um, but just on Instagram, I was like, I'm trying to, I was like trying to sort out how I should, how I should feel about what, what was happening. And it's weird because it's Instagram, right? It's like, there's real life and then there's Instagram, right? And even for me, like a lot of these videos were coming from San Francisco and Oakland, which is like literally 30 minutes away. Like mm-hmm. I'm going there tonight. Um, but at the same time, there was so many things for me to be happy about, you know, like there's so much amazing stuff happening. at like a girl with just like women skateboarding in general, like this event. So I saw, you know, nation, I'm like, I shouldn't like suppress my joy because of what society thinks I should or shouldn't do, you know, around whatever, like my community, my race, you know? Um, and I just want to add one more, like with the hatred part or like get to the, ang- the getting angry part. I think that like, I feel like it's for me personally, I'm in a generation and a time where I'm almost privileged to be angry because yeah. I'm, I'm angry for not only my parents, but for like generations before that, that are in America, because I can be I angry. Be angry. Yeah, they could not be angry and I can be angry and not be looked down for it. Yeah. So I'm, I just wanted to say that. Yeah, that's an <laughs> amazing acknowledgement to in terms of privilege and like that capability. And I do see that difference in our generation versus our parents, even with like last year, you know, the murder of George Floyd and like all the racial um, like move the awakening. There was a difference in how people showed up, but I'm pretty proud of like what I was seeing in terms of like our generation um, and just the solidarity, but yeah, Sadie, any, um, advice or I know it's like kind of, I don't know. We know we don't, we like to say like, let's not, we don't need to give advice, but like, what are some insights you can share with, you know, folks who might can relate to like maybe us or where we were when we were younger. Um, yeah. Thoughts. I think my biggest thing would just be to find, find people or like, Cause when you can't feel like you can be yourself, like find people that will help you make you feel like it's okay mm-hmm. to be yourself. Or nice. I think I've spent a lot of my life just internalizing and not talking about race mm-hmm. at all. And I think having conversations, like I carry a lot of guilt for also not having conversations earlier, or like mm-hmm. speaking out people because I was embarrassed or I didn't think that my problems were enough to talk about or anything like that where I feel like even if it's scary like reach out to someone like reach out to me on Instagram like I'll have a conversation with you like I think it is scary to talk about stuff like that but the like after you do it it's just like it can be life-changing or hearing other people's experiences when you do feel alone or you feel like you can't be yourself um I think too like just throughout this conversation, like what I've heard too, is just like, you can be more than one thing. Like Mm -hmm. Japanese and Chinese, you can be angry and sad. You can be a snowboarder or a skateboarder. Like there's so many levels to your identity that you don't have to figure out one identity. And I think that like, honestly, me realizing that in this conversation was actually like, I don't know. I don't think I've ever realized that. I think I've always felt like you have to know exactly what your identity is or like, no, I don't know. You can work for a snowboard brand in a marketing position and ride a razor scooter. <laughs> oh my god! I was, gonna, I, was gonna, I was gonna say, Sadie, you can. You're all, but no matter what identity you are, you are one bad bitch. But Kim has to bring up the scooter again. <laughs> Dude, I'm trying to bring rollerblading back. All right. I'm going to say it out I loud. I don't know. I don't. Mm. I shared it with the Skate Like Girl directors in my most vulnerable moment in a meeting. Um, not really from like a trick. I'm not trying to do tricks and all that. I never was trying to do that uh, from a cardio standpoint. It's a, an amazing workout, but it also is like, I think cross training for skiers. So I don't know. It's like a whole box of a whole, it's opening up a box of worms for sure. 
but it's fun. I just will say that like if this past year gave us anything, it was just like, just find what makes, find whatever's fun yep. and do it. Yep. And like, don't worry about what people think. No. Nope. Right. And if you're like an Asian kid who snowboards and your parents are like, what the hell are you doing? That's a huge waste of your time or same with skateboarding. Fuck it. Just do it anyways. Like, yeah, we're not saying to rebel, but we're good. I mean, <laughs> it doesn't have to be a rebellion. You can like have respect and like, you know, um, try your best to like communicate and share with your family why you do these things. But at the end of the day, it's like, you got to live your life, you know, Mm -hmm. like they're not living your life for you. And if you can't find that support with them, um, then find it through friends and peers and other people Mm -hmm. or the internet, you know? So, yeah. And if you want to, you know, ride your razor scooter, do it. (laughs) I think Kim's trying to get sponsored. Um (laughs) shout out to uh no nope. yeah shout out to no i don't even know what the brands are actually literally fine... razor razor is oh, the yeah, brand. That's, right. that's the brand i'm fine I... with like uh for skate parks i actually think it would be cool if more parks that were city run had intentional programming like adult swim like youth hour you know what i'm saying like a pool i'd be fine with that then the razor kids can have their scooter time the bmxers <laughs> the bmxers can have their bmxer time like skateboard adult skateboard beginner intermediate like i don't know that's like a whole like thing kim woozy an advocate but... for all <laughs> i'm an advocate for programming at skate parks like it needs yes. to happen that's like what we do but i also love that everyone's just together but i don't know i'm torn we'll check back in later all right well we'll wrap up here thank you so much seaman sadie for your time i feel lucky that we got to experience this event together um yeah, yeah. hopefully it's like many more to come annually like hopefully for our friends that couldn't make it this time like it just grows and evolves and um i think it's i would love to see more spaces and events like this happen for all different groups right um so yeah definitely big shout out to everyone that made this event possible and we'll see you next year bye everyone thanks for listening